Hello all, and welcome to Sunday Q&A. Some of you may think he hasn't changed his t-shirt. He's basically just swapped the phone around from this angle to this angle, and he's carried on recording. Uh, you'd be wrong, actually. <laughs> In this case, normally you'd be right. But no, um, I have to record these early because of the YouTube and the time it takes But mum. But no, the, the, what we've basically done, this is now Saturday afternoon, and I spent the morning with business partner Alan um, redoing the, the new truck. We boarded the back of it. It used to be an ex-Wix truck, and it's covered in oil and sand where things are spilt. So we've got some boards, we put it in, make sure everything's right, put the new fire extinguishers in, um, the high-vis, the hard hat, the, the spare taco roll, the first aid kit, all the stuff you need. While I was there, one of the guys who used to watch the channel, who still actually does watch the channel, a bloke called um, John, my mate John from Belfast, was going to join with us, decided to join on his own, fair enough, come up to see me, and he bought me this. I have got a bottle of Writer's Tears Copper Pot Irish Whiskey, which I am thoroughly looking forward to trying. Um, you know, I don't know if I'll have something today. I've kind of um, special occasion spirits now for me. I've got to be honest with you. You're driving all the time. Uh, what a thoroughly nice guy. And I like to say, John, thank you very much. Genuine pleasure to meet you. And um, I just wish I'd had more time. I've just never got any time. I'm always doing stuff. But seem like a really nice guy. Lovely. He reckons he's in the game for about another five years. Um, bless him, in, him and the... Um, him and his significant other, I hope you don't mind saying this, they're, they're looking to do the foster bit, which I thoroughly approve of. Um, and I feel a bit guilty, you really didn't have to. So if you need a guy in Ireland, I've said this before, here's his business card. John, da, 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 yeah. You can't see the number on the business card because he's got a print over it, so I took the liberty of doing this. So he's running all the time. He comes from, um, he's like, I think he's Belfast Way, and then he comes over to here, Manchester, then he's down to London, then he's up to Wales. So if you've got part loads give the guy a ring he's a nice guy you really didn't have to John honestly and next time hopefully rather than you sitting there watching me trying to nail boards down the back of a truck maybe we go for breakfast or something in the meantime to work Sunday Q&A so I did one which I thought was struck a chord and sure enough it did the conveyor belt of fools the mob that are running on the CX that are basically quoting too cheap and it's all a bit, a bit of pill for all of us. You're like, oh, yeah, I've got a quote for 20 quid. And you're like, 20 quid? He's going to be on the job for three hours. By the time you take your days out, he's not even making minimum wage. But that is just so. Once again, this is what you guys thought. So, Gold Member says he's still out there with his own channel. I did a little video on other people who've got channels just like me. Give him a chat. He's a nice guy. Um, hopefully, the falls will fall off the end. They do. But for everyone that falls off the end, another one starts at the beginning, hence the conveyor belt. What can we do? Um, BTH Trads and Hall. He's back on the CX at the moment. Zero feedback is a killer. And Andy Real Sim Shady also asked me the question, should you wait to get paid before you put positive feedback? Now, back in the day, I did one on how to get um, um, positive feedback. And I've changed my mind about it uh, because, obviously, the longer I've been running, the more I've gone, oh, yeah, a bit of a bum steer there, Pete. So I'm going to do you guys a video but yeah, on what I reckon is the best way forward. I think it, I'm, I'm, I sometimes do these videos because I think they're going to crop up a bit and you can just go check that one out. So, yeah, but there's one coming forward. I know, I, I, bear with me, I'll see if I can get that one out this week. Um, David Johnson said, he said, the same with driving lessons. He said, you get, it, it's the kind of, there just seems to be a certain thing that comes in, like, you know. He said, you get people, they use their redundancy to get started, they pass their tests, they really don't know what they're doing, they, they're not in a significant place to part, to like to teach. So he said they end up quoting like £15 a lesson or one guy at £99 for like 10 lessons. Don't take into account distance to pick up. Um, don't take into account the money they're doing in fuel. So as a result of which they're parked up on the side of the road, half the lesson is actually spent them trying to teach you theory. You don't want theory, you want practice. Um, he, said, he said he had a mate of his. He said 20, he, he basically, he said, I, I quoted him mates rates. I said, I'll, I'll take your kids through for 20 quid, normally charges 25. He said, at the end of the day, the guy said, look, in the nicest possible way, I've got a geezer for 15, I've got to go with it, I need the dough. He said, he's got two kids five years later, neither of them passed. Bit of a false economy sometimes. And that is something that we're coming to that's coming out with this one as well. Um, David Winters is one born every minute. Hello, mate. My mate driving a taxi. Um, yeah, I've got, oh, there's something. I am going to move my mate um, in a seven and a half ton curtain side, which is not ideal, but I've worked out a way to do it. Any advice on doing a removal, and I'm doing it for a friend, and he is the nicest man I've ever met, um, in a seven and a half ton curtain side, what I plan to do is try to get like some heavy 
the, the big bits on the sides and get the straps over the top once the middle bit is full. But any any advice that you can give me on that one, I've got a plan. Um, it, it may actually involve another friend of mine, but I will definitely make it happen. Um, Dolly Dalton says, yeah, again, coming back to this conveyor belt of force, he said, he said I bid on a job, because he's got a firm, they do like fridge jobs. Um, he said, I've been on it many, many times. And he said, the guy who I normally talk to wasn't there. So he's on holiday, so the assistant was there. The assistant turned around and went, I'm sorry, but we've got like a, a, a few cheaper quotes. And Dolly's gone, okay, fine. I understand, going with the cheaper quotes, like, you know. Later that day, same guy rings up in an absolute flap and says, we needed a fridge van. They've turned up in a normal van. They won't release the goods. We now need a fridge van and we need it on the hurry up. So Dolly said, we ended up doing the job and I charged him double. Quite right too, because there's a difference There's a difference between going into a garage and saying, I need the tyre change. And there's, I've broken down on the side of the motorway and my tyre's blown. I need you to come out. Which I, you know, so it is that thing, isn't it? And we are, again, coming to the answer. And yeah, we'll come back to that one. Um, van on the run says... Um, Hopefully, it's hopefully starting up. Um, yeah, hopefully the starting up cost. Because I've done the video, he's saying hopefully some of these people will work out the profit and loss margin. Maybe think Ooh, start quoting a bit higher, and then we won't have this problem. I'd like to hope so, mate. But I wouldn't make money on. I wouldn't put money on it, like you know. So at the end of the day, they will come unstuck. So. Uh, Lee Westcott says, he says, uh, you get the same amount of van. He says, Muppets amount of van. Basically, we work for beer and crisps, you know, sort of. And you, you're quoting, what, 250 for a man and van for the day, I would say, probably uh, 330 for two man and van. You're going to get people coming in at 100 quid. But then they're going to turn up late, they're going to drop things, they're going to break things. I, again, if you're daft enough to book it, but this is what it comes down to. Um, and Ian Merrick says, he said, the conveyor belt is um, out of our controls. And this is kind of what we're coming to. Ultimately, it's the shippers who decide. The penalties are on them. And Bob King, I think, really really um, hit the nail on the head. He said, it's a many-faceted problem. He says, you're going to get young lads that live at home. You're going to get dreamers with bank loans. And he says, the same the world over. He said, it's the same for window cleaners. Some will turn up, some will clean your windows. They will, some will charge you cheap, they won't. Um, some accountants will save you money, some don't. Um, he said, at the end of the day, you just have to hang in long enough. And I think that's basically the size of things. I think the thing is, if you're going to take a cheap quote, and from our point of view, because we're shippers as well, if, we take, if you take a cheap quote, you want to know why it's cheap. You want to ring them. You want to find out what's their van like. Are they tidy? Do they know what they're doing? A lot of times, we have one the other day, and the guy quoted, um, it's going into Soho in a Luton van, and he quoted £45. I now rung him up, and he says he found out the situation. He said, no, he was absolutely switched on. He said, look, he said, I'm going to give you 55 which is still loopy cheap. But he said, it just, you know, it, it's, I, I find that it's still incredibly crazy money. Admittedly, it's, it's, it's based, I think he's basing it on the fact that it's only 30-odd miles, but you've got zone charge on that. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know which van, so we didn't even pay zone charge. But it might only be 30-odd miles, but it's 30-odd miles in Soho. So, you know, yeah, I think ultimately, if you're, gonna, if you're a shipper and you take a cheap quote, a lot of the time on your head be it. Um, because there's a good chance the person who's quoted that cheap quote doesn't really know what they're doing. Um, and if you're hanging long enough, eventually I think, you know, I've had it before, and the guys have turned around and said, well, you're not the cheapest, but you switched on, and you sound like you know what you're doing, so we're going to send it across now. So that's kind of size of things. Right, we did a bit, um, I've, got, I've had a few um, other bits come back on the seven and a half time because I had to put out some questions on the seven and a half time. And as always, you guys have come to my rescue. Um, Ed Blue, uh, Brian Royal says, um, from Euro Parts, under a tenant, and they deliver to your door. I've sorted the Ad Blue out, and I can't believe I didn't check it. It's, it's your old favourite. <laughs> Delivery drivers galore, Amazon. £17.50 for 20 litres of Ad Blue. The petrol pumps, the, um, the service stations charge me a pound a litre, so it's cheaper than the service station. Um, my mate Colin around the corner charges me 50p a litre, but I'm not in there all the time. So, And now we've got two trucks on the go. I'm just going to order them off Amazon and make sure they're topped up all the time. So that's that one sorted anyway. Um, James Curtis says he reckons I'll lose viewers now I'm in heavy haulage. You may be right. If I do, I do. It's fine. Hopefully there's a load of videos out there that will help the ones that need to. And if I end up doing the heavy haulage and nobody wants to watch anymore, there is, uh, hopefully I've done a link earlier on, there's a million other people out there. You've got um, Goldmember, you've got B. Carroll, you've got um, 
Oh God, the beardy drivers out there. There's there's other people out there, and um, be my guest. You know, <laughs> I've done my bit. If it's time for me to take a back seat, so be it. You know, let's go. Um, Andrew also passed his. He said, "Hey Dave, all right, Brian." Um, Past his category C. Well done, my friend. Congratulations. I'm still, I'm on mine. I've done my medical. I've now got the app on my phone. I'm doing the theory test all the time. What should you do on the approach to a, a tunnel? Should you um, change to a lower gear, open your windows, retune your radio, or check your tyre pressure? Retune your radio. Because if, you, if something happens in the tunnel, you can hear about the emergency. Hands up anyone who's ever retuned their radio on the approach to a tunnel. No, never going to happen. But I'm working my way for it, so there we go. Um, Danny Boy. Oh, by the way, I'm part of this WhatsApp group, and I never comment because it's just time. But for some bizarre reason, I checked it about five minutes ago. I believe Danny got his operator's license. Mate, congratulations. Onwards and upwards. It's easier in a bigger truck. Easier to get loaded, easier to get unloaded. People get out of your way, and you can see the road. Um, he said, you're, oh yeah, that, he said about the 15 hours, because you know, you, the work time directive, you can only work for 13 hours a day, but once, three times a fortnight, you can work for 15 hours. He said, your start time doesn't count from when you put the card in, your, time, your, your start time starts from when you start. So say, for example, you get to work at nine o'clock in the morning, and then you put your card in uh, at 11 o'clock to go drive in, you've actually started at nine. And he said, you, um, you need to take into account this with manual entry. Manual entry, like tacos, are one of those things that scares me. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to work out, because where we are at the moment, it requires about shunting, because I park one van in front of the other, so I've got to move one van to get the other one out to move one back, and it's just going, driving without card. I'm going, oh, my God. But apparently, shunting is okay. The, the taco will just reset itself. Uh, this is, again, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, and if you ever get pulled over, you can say, well, I had to move a van out of the way. As long as you haven't been driving for 20 miles or, you know, for half an hour, it's going to be like, yeah, OK, we understand that. It's fine. Um, yeah, that was that was good. That, 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 that brought me to a question myself. What if, like, OK, throw myself out there. Guys, need your help. I, I did a job the other day. I had to finish early because I had to go, go, go and meet a mate or do a medical or something. So I finished the job, ejected my card. That's the day done. And then a job pinged up. And so it's like, say, for example, I finished early. I finished about three o'clock, so I was going to see a friend. And then it was, can you pick this job up from Dunstable at six o'clock? So it would have been getting back in the lorry, going to Dunstable at six o'clock, getting back here for, say, about half, six, seven, delivering first thing in the morning. Can I just put my card back in? Or do I have to do some kind of manual entry or something like that? Once you've ejected it, does it count it as a day? Or can I just put it back in? So please help. As always... I am just the guy with the big nose, the big ears, and the big mouth. I know nothing, and I, I fall on my... I, I, I bow to your superior experience, please let me know. In the meantime, we are now on to miscellaneous. Um, Joe Render says, right, OK. How can I sleep securely in a Luton van when the isol isolator switch is in the front? Depends on the Luton van. Some of them, like ours, has got uh, the buttons on the outside. So if you're on the inside, you hit the buttons from, like, which round if you're on the outside you hit the buttons mine used to have the buttons down underneath by like where the back wheel is or on the inside but to do it because of safety you had to flick a little switch if you've got that what you do is you jump in pull the shutter pull the tail up pull the shutter down put the tail up, and then flick the isolator switch so it can only be worked from the inside if you've got one of those double buttons probably the best thing i mean in the nice possible way you either get um a padlock clasp, which is like the one that's fitted on the outside, so when the shutter is down, it falls flat, and then you can padlock it from the inside, or just shut it. Just pull the tail up, shut it, because when they go in for the van, they're not going for you. They're going to see if there's something in there worth money. If they pull the shutter up and there's a geezer in the back, the first thing they're going to do is run or pull the shutter up. Nobody wants grief. No one wants a screaming match. No one wants the possibility that, you know, the geezer is having to sleep in the back of the van, you know, sort of got a crowbar. Or, or, or you're carrying sort of some kind of malicious weapon. They're just out after the money. They want an easy thing. It's like open, take, and go. If there's any aggro involved, they'll be on their heels. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But if you are concerned, you know, I'd say just get a little um, clasp and a padlock, padlock on the inside. Again, people that know better than me, please let me know. Um, Shane Mididani, Mididani. Um, why am I not using Instagram stories? Because I don't understand any of these things. 
I, I tried to get on Facebook and I tried to get on Twitter for a little while by posting the videos. It lasted for about four videos. I just do the YouTube. I, you know, hopefully they'll find me if they need me. Um, I just, you know, I'm not really... It's not, it's not my biggest issue, to be honest with you. I just want to help some people. So, uh, Bob King, he says, um, oh, yeah, this was kind of like um, when you go into places. He says, it's going like you're there to help, not there to find problems. Um, and t uh, Tesco Trent Darby also said, I love that. Um, always goes in happy and polite and professional. It gets him down a bit when people are not polite back. I know what you're saying and I think I'm going to do you guys a video um, it, is, it, it doesn't just apply to driving a truck it applies to all kinds of life it applies to my principle of angel training which I may mention in the video I may not <laughs> we may come to that another day but um, yeah I understand it it's like uh, my favourite game which is make the full truck driver smile not the easiest game in the world sometimes but I have a bash you know there we go we'll come to that when we do your video guys um, Steve Campbell says um Oh, yeah, this was quite interesting, actually. Uh, the best places to tip waste are not councils. I didn't even know you could do this. The, the marvels of this channel, again. Um, what you want to do is you want to go to, um, like, licensed, licensed waste... It's easy for me to say. Licensed waste transfer slot, not council tips, like sitter or biffer. It's just because you pay, but they'll take your rubbish. So I just kind of thought the only place you could ever get rid of rubbish was going to um, you'd go to the tip, tidy tip. But apparently there are places, presumably skip places, and they will take your rubbish for you for a fee. I'll need to find the nearest one to me because I've got to get rid of the fridge that's in my shed. Um, and the fridges have kind of got that fair and stuff like that, and they're not that easy. And I've got some wooden chairs and a carpet in my garden I've got to get rid of. So, yeah, find a way around that one. But, yeah, thanks very much for the tip, mate. Once again, any more information, gratefully received. Um, and also went on to say, um, in his opinion, Shipley isn't bad. Any van and you ship, um, a waste of time. And if you're in a car and you want to run, Courier Expert allows cars. I don't know whether the exchange allows cars or not. I don't think it does. It's kind of a courier network. But apparently Courier Expert. So if you want to get started and you've only got a car, Courier Expert could be your way forward. Never done it. Can't comment on it. If you do it, let me know. Best of luck. Um... What else we got here? PP says he's about to join the about to join the CX. Good luck, my friend. I hope it works out for you. Um, Ganesh Bazira is Bazira um, thinking of jumping right. He's thinking of jumping from a short wheelbase to a curtain side Luton. In his short wheelbase, he's currently making six hundred to seventy seven hundred pound a week after all's paid, and he's not doing a million miles. I would say. Hang on a second, Amazon. Sorry about that. Um, DPD. My child is constantly complaining that she has no money. Um, I've taken him four parcels from ASOS today. <laughs> if you want more money, stop buying things. You don't need any more shoes. What is it? Wait, where is she? Don't get me started. Where was we? Yes, so he's currently making uh, £600 to £700 a week after all he's paid and he's not doing a million miles. And he's thinking of jumping in a little van. I would say if you're in a short wheelbase and you're making that kind of money... I'd stick with short wheelbase. I mean, in a Luton van, you're probably going to be looking into bringing in about 12.50 if you if you go for it, which will probably involve some miles, probably involve some diesel, probably some more, some more wear and tear. I imagine you I, I would think you could find yourself swapping, um, making a little bit more money, a negligible bit more money. For, no, if you're making that kind of money, mate, I'd stick with it. Honestly, I would, I would try to focus on getting more end users and... Um, yeah, maybe expanding a short wheelbase fleet because that's that's for short wheelbase you're doing well. Um, having said that, if you fancy the jump up, give it a go. Don't let me put you off like you know. It's just fact you say you're making seven hundred pound a week after all is paid. If you said I'm making seven hundred pound a week before X's, I'd say jump. But after all is paid, that's good. Um, Leo, is it Leo Maisie or something like Mackenzie? Sorry about that. Um, currently working for Speedy for Speedy Freight in a Luton, and he's going to buy the book. If you do, I hope you enjoy it. I'm I'm I'm, re I'm I'm the rewrite for the second one at the moment. Completely different to the first. I'll let you know when it's out. I might be trying to do it for Christmas. Maria, Maria, how do you get end users? Did a video on that. They are like hen's teeth. They're not easy. It takes time and it takes legwork. There's no shortcut, but there is, you know, some things that you can go through to, and you can be lucky. You you know, you could send out a thousand emails and get no reply, or you can send out one email and get a, get a customer. You know, roll the dice on that one, isn't it, really? <coughs> Tobias Green says, hang on. 
<coughs> sorry. Uh, what vans are automatic and can be adapted? I think you see, you mentioned the fact he's got a disability or something going on there. Um, I don't know. So once again, I throw it out to those who've got um, you know more knowledge than me. What's the best van to drive? If you have a disability, presumably, like I don't know what the disability is, and is there any way to adapt vans? Anybody who knows, please let me know, and that way I can pass it on. <coughs> Sorry. Um, SY career removals. Is there enough jobs for medium-sized vans? No, Ruth. Yes, there is. There's jobs for everything. And the thing is, in a medium-sized van, you can also do short wheelbase jobs, and you can do small van jobs. So it's not like that is the only van you're limited to. I like the bigger the better. Because in my seven and a half ton truck, I can also do loot and curtain side jobs. I did miss out the other day on one because, and I was eight, I was like eight minutes away. I was in Milton Keynes, loot and curtain side. Wasn't going far, Milton Keynes to Milton Keynes. And I rung him up and said, look, I don't mind, I'll do it. Um, I might have been a bit dear, I don't know. Um, but he said, no, I think you're too big. I don't think you'll be able to get in. He said, the site is small. So you do lose out sometimes, but on the whole, the bigger the van, the more jobs you can do. So bear that in mind as well. Um, the fly mattress, he's just like commented, once again, like the name, fly mattress. Um, just started in the Vivaro, he says he's looking to charge a pound a mile for a small van, 130 a mile for a long wheelbase. He's seen what some people are charging, he's seen what other people are charging. What do I think? If you want my honest opinion, I think you won't win that many jobs. Um, I personally say I think around 60, most small van jobs sell for around about 65p a mile. A long wheelbase job will sell for, used to sell for, around 90p a pound a mile. At the moment, a lot of long wheelbases aren't getting that much money. Saying that, that was just when we was coming out of lockdown. Things were starting to get busier again. If it was me, I would aim for 65p on a, on a, long, on, on a small van job, going up to a pound on a long wheelbase job. The thing to do, you quote, quote the figure you're happy with. And get, well, if you, basically, if you're quoting and you're winning every job, you're too cheap. If you're quoting and you're not winning any jobs, you're too dear. And you try everything in between until you find the level that you need to be at. So, But I, I, I think as a rule of thumb, I'd go 65p on a small van, a pound on a wheelbase. Some people go dearer and get it. I'd, I prefer to get the jobs. So it's your choice. Oh, and then he went on to say, and central London, and this is kind of the end, actually, and, and central London, not the greatest. Try driving from Croydon to Brent on a Friday afternoon. Funny you should say that. I did that once. I had a pickup in Croydon. I picked it up at half past one. It was a pole. No, I dropped it off in Croydon at half past one. It was a pole. And then I think I had to go home for some reason. It took me six hours to drive from Croydon to Dunstable. It's probably about 40 miles. There had been several accidents on the 25. I hate Croydon. <laughs> I've got nothing against the place personally, but going into Croydon, I can get back from Edinburgh quicker than I can get back from Croydon. But hey, these are things we learn as we go on the Career Exchange. I hope you're all well now. I've got to order more ratchet straps because we ran out and um, I've got to order some more batteries, little batteries for clicker things and just do the stuff. But in the meantime, I hope you're all well. And once again, thanks again to John. Oh, and also, I can't remember. Somebody asked me again. I can't remember if I've done it. Is If Darren Fifth Wheel is still running. Mate, if I remember, there's going to be a link up there. Again, give him a shout. See how he's getting on. And if you need a driver in Belfast, there's the number again. His name's John. He's super duper lovely. He may you. He may buy you a bottle of whiskey too. You never know. But, um... Yeah, that's the size of things. Truck starts on Monday. New lady starting on Monday. I'll let you know how it goes. I'll try and catch up on my videos. And in the meantime, hope you will. Take care, take money.